Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Quentin and you're watching Mid-South Outdoor Life. Today, I'm bringing you a how-to video all about tying custom sabiki rigs that I like to use for catching skipjack and crappie. This is in fact the follow-up to my skipjack fishing video I posted about 10 days ago. You guys made it pretty clear that you wanted some information on how to tie these custom rigs and I'm going to try to give you as much of that information as I possibly can in the least amount of time as I possibly can because I know your time is valuable just as mine is. That being said, we're going to dive right into it by talking about what is a sabiki rig. Well, this is what I would call a traditional sabiki rig in that it starts with some sort of swivel or snap swivel or sometimes just a split ring and then it goes into a series of lures or jigs all attached to the same main line and it terminates in some sort of an attachment point for a sinker. You would either cast this out and retrieve it or drop it below uh, your boat and, and give it a jigging motion in the hopes of catching uh, usually bait fish but sometimes game fish. Like I said, this is the traditional form. A series of jigs that terminates in a sinker. But in this video, we're actually going to go over three different types of sabiki rigs. Rigs like the one that I just showed you are commonly available in some mom and pop bait shops and certainly uh, all over the internet. Uh, they have their pros and cons. One is the convenience of not having to tie them, but the, the big con is uh, they're only available in so many colors. Whereas with, uh, with a custom rig, you can come up with anything you want that's going to work best for you in, in the location that you're going to fish. And I'm going to show you three different ways uh, to tie these rigs and then you can, you can come up with infinite results uh, in your own time. Before I tie anything, I wanted to take just a second to point out this work area. Because in my personal opinion, having a good work area is a really key component to getting consistent results when you're tying your sabiki rigs. This is not the kind of thing that you want to try on the bank of the river or in windy conditions on your boat. You want to do this at home. Either set up a spot uh, in your garage or, or clear off the kitchen table and make a dedicated spot for tying your sabiki rigs and then just head out and fish. So this is how I like to set up mine and you can kind of morph it into whatever works for you. But I always like to have some sort of container, whether it be a tackle bag or one of these line spooling bags. But the line that I'm going to use, I always want on my left hand side. And I'll pull this line out to my right. And I use hemostats to hold the line in place so that when, when I'm tying, it's not, not flopping everywhere. And if you'll notice, I've got a, a tape measure laid out here. That's because we're going to use measurements. Uh, for, for placing our knots so that we get consistent results. Uh, other things that you're gonna need besides an open space, something to hold your line, a, a tape measure, you gotta have the hemostats, you need something to cut your line, and then you need a variety of jigs. Uh, when it comes to the line, the line that I prefer to use is uh, fluorocarbon. The reason I like fluorocarbon is because it's almost invisible, and if you happen to be fishing in a clear water environment, sometimes Fluorocarbon over mono will make the difference. Okay, here we go with demo number one. And for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using this yellow 65-pound uh, braid. I'm just using that to, to make it easier for you guys to see. If we were tying an actual rig, I would, of course, be using fluorocarbon. And by the way, I prefer uh, 12 to 20-pound uh, line to tie my rigs with. So what we wanna do is we wanna draw out uh, about five or six foot of line here for us to work with. Again, I'm using this little, this little spooling box here to keep this line contained. This, uh, this uh, demonstrational rig that we're tying here is going to have three jigs on it, and then it will terminate with a sinker, much like the traditional rig. So I guess you could say we're tying the traditional sabiki here. So what you want to do is uh, you want to start by threading on the jig that you want to be at the bottom of the rig. In this case, it's the red and white jig. Then the, the next jig that you want in the series, and then whatever jig that you want at the, uh, the top of your rig, uh, you would thread on last. Then I'm, I'm gonna take this, this line here on my, on my right side, and I'm gonna clip on my hemostats, and I'm gonna slide these hemostats down to the end of the tape. I want 16 inches between the end of the hemostats and this first jig. So find your reference point there on your, uh, on your tape measure, in this, in this case, it's the uh, 48 inch mark on this tape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch the jig 
and line together so that I don't lose that mark. This is really important for you to end up with a consistent result. You use this tape measure. Got to go for consistency here. Then I'm going to take my left hand, I'm going to slide it down the line, and I want to draw out five and a half inches. And I want to measure it with my tape here, five and a half inches. Now, I'm going to wrap this around the fingertips here on my left hand. I'm going to make two loops. One, two. Now what I want is to pass this jig through those two loops. I find that easiest if I, if I use my, my right hand here to sort of slide those loops off my fingers. I don't know if you can see the loops there. I want to pass the jig through there one time. And all I need to do now is draw these loops down. I'm going to pull with my right hand while pinching with my left. Notice I'm controlling these loops here all the time. I'm going to switch it to my right hand and I'm going to pull with my left hand. Keeping these loops consistent and drawing them down. Once they get fairly small, I want to put, that, put the loops in my mouth to moisten them and I'm going to draw this down while it's in my mouth. And look how perfectly nice and neat that knot came out. I don't know if you can see that, but now for right now that's all we're going to do with that jig, but we're going to come back and visit it here in a little bit. I'm going to slide the hemostats back down the tape and I'm going to put that knot back at my reference point, the 48 inch mark. That's important because this next jig, I want it to end up being uh, a consistent result with the first jig. So I'm going to go 16 inches because I know about what distance I want to end up with when this rig is done. 16 inches and I'm going to pinch the second jig to the line just like I did in the first one and I'm going to slide out five and a half inches. There's my five and a half inches. I want two loops. Run it around my fingers two times. Slide the loops off a little bit. Run the jig through the loop one time. And now I gotta draw the loops down. I'm put it in my mouth. Again, perfect, nice, neat. It never got hot, therefore it didn't get weak. Remember, when you're doing this with 12 pound line, you gotta do everything you can to, to keep the integrity of the line at that knot so, so that you can catch dozens and dozens of fish or maybe maybe even a hundred fish without that, that uh, knot giving up on you. Now I'm going to put this back at the reference point because once again I want 16 inches before my next jig. Our final result by the way is not going to be 16 inches. I'll show you that in a minute but we want to put our knots starting at 16 inches you guys can play with that and get the result that you want. You might end up using 15 inches or 14 inches to get the result you want. As long as you're consistent, that's what's important. Perfect. Okay. Remember how I told you you wouldn't end up with 16 inches? Let's see what we got. I bet it's close to 12. The first jig and the second jig have... Uh, let's go with 12 and a half on that one. The second jig and the third jig have, yeah, 12 and a half. So really consistent uh, result there, and that's what we want, consistency. They will cast better that way, and I don't know, I'm, I think the fish like consistency, but what do I know? All right, to terminate this rig, uh, this is a traditional layout, so it's gonna terminate in a sinker. I'm gonna get, I'm going to give it like 12 inches before my sinker here. I'm just going to cut this off. And now all I've got to do is uh, use my preferred knot uh, on fluorocarbon. I like a polymer. So I would just uh, put a, a snap swivel here and tie it up with a polymer knot. And now I can attach whatever weight of sinker that I feel I'm going to need to fish at the depth that I want to fish at. And at the top end of this rig, I'm not going to use a snap swivel. I'm actually going to use just a swivel. A small one like a, like a number seven would be good. Uh, I never go bigger than that. And sometimes I'll use the really, really tiny ones from Spro. So yeah, just a polymer knot right here uh, to, to end up with a, uh, with, with a swivel on the end. And the reason that I do it that way, let's see if I've got, yeah, this is one of my skipjack rigs here. I've got a snap swivel here, and the reason I like to have a snap swivel on the end of my main line is because with skipjack, 
or crappie for that matter, they're really finicky on color. And you never know what color they're going to be hitting on uh, until you get there. I like to be able to change rigs really quickly um, to find out what color they're going to hit on. So now there's one more thing that we need to do to really finalize this rig. You may have noticed that the dropper loops to these jigs, uh, they are in fact a loop. And that can be, give you a, an, an additional tangle uh, or a, an additional issue. And one thing that I've found that helps to deal with that loop is I like to put a knot in this loop really close to the jig because that'll keep the jig from sliding up the loop like that. So what I'll do is I'll just draw it down with my, with my fingers there and just do a basic overhand knot and then just sort of work the loop back toward the jig head so that the knot ends up right at the jig head. Now the jig head cannot slide up the loop and you're going to get far less tangles when you go this route. Keep in mind we're working with tiny fluorocarbon that's nearly invisible underwater. So this double line and that knot right there, it's not going to bother the fish. Main, that's a big reason to use fluorocarbon over mono. Now that's the basic layout of this Sabiki rig guys, but stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you some additional tips that can really make a big difference on uh, the results that you get when you're fishing for skipjack or crappie, either one. So what do we do with this rig now that it's done? We're going to throw it in the tackle box? I think not. We're going to tie it to the pole and hope that it doesn't get tangled in uh, everything in sight on the way to the fishing hole? I think not. We've got to store it. One way to do that is these things, the rig wrap boxes. Now, these are the bigger rig wraps. Uh, some people will store their sabikis in these smaller orange ones. Not me. I like these bigger pink ones. Uh, I'll fill up a whole box, by the way, with rigs. This is the rig pack, uh, rig pack 60. And I'll take a bunch of sabikis fishing with me. Uh, I like to have that variety. But you know, these are laid out uh, for you to be able to store, store your lures in here. You can kind of experiment with, you know, which way you like to wrap these, what works best for you. Uh, that's the neat thing about them. They, they can be used a variety of different ways. Just find one that works for you. And what I really like to do is leave the uh, leave the swivel. I didn't put a swivel on here, but you know, I told you about it. I like to leave the swivel hanging out the end of the box because what I can do is I can now I can now attach the swivel to this snap swivel before I ever open this box. And when I open it, I can just sort of unwind it and you know work it all the way down to the end of the rig and it's tied up and ready to go. It's not going to get wrapped up in everything. As I'm telling you, when you got three to six hooks and these little bitty light jigs uh, flopping all over the place out in the wind, you're going to get some tangles if you don't put some thought into this. Okay, so I've showed you the demonstration version of a traditional Sibiki rig and now it's time to get serious and show you a full custom rig. The rig I consider to be the secret weapon. The rig that is my favorite thing to throw when I'm targeting skipjack. It does not terminate in a sinker like the rig that I just showed you, so the knot structure will be slightly different. It terminates in a quarter ounce jig. Uh, color might vary, but this is a custom colored quarter ounce jig from Shamalure. You cannot buy these in stores. You have to get them straight from Shamalure. Uh, you can look them up on Facebook. I'm going to put that down here. And by the way, in case you're asking yourself by the time this is over, is this guy promoting Shamalure? Yep. I sure am because they're freaking awesome jigs. I'm not promoting them because they give me stuff or because they sponsor me. It's because they truly have a better jig. Uh, these are powder coated jig heads. These are, these are hand tied. You can get any color you want. The durability is off the charts. I have Shamalure jigs that I've literally used for over a year and the paint is still perfect. Whereas if you go with something like these, these are Bass Pro Marabou jigs which by the way, can, you probably can't even see that in that light. Those can be quite effective, but they're junk. You'll, the paint will be gone off these in a, you know, maybe a dozen to two dozen skipjack. They'll be torn to shreds uh, in, in an hour or two. 
these will last and last and last as long as you don't snag them on the bottom. Let's get going with tying. So the layout of this is, like I said, it's gonna terminate in this uh, really awesome purple and gold quarter ounce jig. It's gonna go to this, I don't know the name of it, this is new from them. A uh, little double bug-eyed thing there in a silver and gold. Then going to the same, same color is this that we terminate with, but it's a much smaller size, this is 132nd ounce. And then back to one of these double bug eye silver and gold. This is an awesome combination, guys. You gotta try it. Shamalur, Facebook. So let's lay it out. We're gonna we're gonna roll out our 12-pound fluoro, and we're gonna thread on the jig the jig that we want to terminate with. To our next jig. Remember, I promised you guys I was going to show you three different layouts or three different versions. And this is the second one. The first one was the traditional one that terminates in a sinker. This one is going to terminate in a jig. Alright, so I got my, my order correct. All my jigs are on there. Slide them over to the left. Click on the hemostats. Slide them down to the end. Take my first jig. Slide it down to my 16 inch reference. Pinch the jig in the line. Five and a half inches. Two loops. Pass the jig through. Work the loops down. Put it in your mouth. Draw it down. Nice and neat. Now we're gonna repeat the, the same process two more times. And then the final jig is gonna be different because remember we're gonna terminate this one in a jig. So here we go. Get a 16 inch reference. Five and a half inches. Two loops. Pass the jig through. Work the loops down. Okay, our first three jigs are tied and now we're gonna terminate the rig with our final jig. Here's where it's gonna be different. We're not gonna to go to the same rep, uh, reference measurement that we did for the other three jigs. I like to shorten it by about two and three quarter inches. So rather than a 16 inch reference, we're gonna take off about two and three quarter inch I'll show you why here in just a moment. Then do the same thing, pinch the line and slide out, this time instead of five and a half inches, slide out six inches. These measurements are very important. Make your two loops, but instead of passing the jig through one time, pass it through the loops twice. That's important. That'll make this final knot more durable, ensuring that it won't come apart. Remember, we're gonna snip off the end of this. It's not gonna go to a sinker. So we gotta make sure this knot is nice and durable because we're gonna be putting on a whole lot of pissed off skipjack and crappie that would love for this knot to come apart so they can get away. Moisten it and draw it down. Snip off the tag end. Now, why did we change our measurement from 16 inches? Well, it's because this dropper loop has to be taken into account. See that little dropper loop there? So let's check a measurement and see how far apart our jigs actually are. Let's see. From our first jig to our second jig, I'd say that's 12 and a quarter. Our second jig and our third jig. That's 12 and a quarter, maybe 12 and 3 eighths. Now our bottom jig to our third jig. 12 and a quarter. So that, that two and three quarter inch uh, change that we made there uh, on the end allowed us to come up with a, with a consistent, a consistently spaced pattern. What's left? Well, we've got to add our knots right next to our jig heads. Let me do that real quick. Okay, all three of our jigs have, their, have the knot right by the jig head. If you forgot why we did that, just rewind to the demonstration part. Check that out again. Last but not least, we got to put a swivel 
on the top of our rig so that we've got a good attachment point for connecting to our main line. This is fluoro, so I'm going to use a polymer knot. Always, always, always use saliva to tighten that down. So there it is. A completed, fully custom Subiki rig ready to go out and wreak havoc. All that's left now is to attach it to our main line or to store it in our box and tie another one. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that later in the video I would include some additional tips that might make the difference between you catching a few fish or a lot of fish or something to that effect. Well, the time is now. And we're going to start with this. What is this mess about? Huh? What is all that crap? Well, this is about time management. Anytime you're going to be using a multi-lure sabiki rig, you're going to be dealing with a certain amount of tangles. It's just going to happen. Uh, if for no other reason than the fish themselves, they can get wild. And, and when you, you might be reeling in two or three fish at a time and you put them on the deck of the boat and they're flopping and they're jumping everywhere and they're wrapping these, these rigs up. And so you're going to spend a, you know, some degree of your time dealing with tangles. And my tip for this is if you end up with a sabiki rig, uh, that's more than just a little bit twisted up, don't sit there and, and use your valuable fishing time trying to untangle that rig. Just just cut that rig loose from your main line and uh, throw it in the bottom of your tackle bag or some some kind of container. And then when you get home, just cut the rig apart and retie it. That's one of the big pluses to knowing how to do your own custom rig versus a store-bought rig. You can just throw that thing in the bottom of the bag and put on a new one so that you can get back to fishing. Deal with that at home. The next tip. I cannot stress enough how much you need color variation. You've got to have some variety if you really want to know that whenever you get to that spot, you're going to have the best possible chance at the best possible catch. Because uh, skipjack and crappie, is, they're really particular when it comes to color. It's one of the big reasons I love Shamalure. But one of Shamalure's most deadly weapons is just this. That's their basic uh, white and silver uh, Skippy rig. If you contact Shamalure and tell them you want their, you know, the good old faithful white, that's what you're going to get with that uh, that uh, signature slash cut on there. You got to have that in the box. But stuff like this, uh, this black and gold with a hint of green and purple, there's a special reason why I came up with that color. I'm not going to say exactly what it is just yet. I'm going to save that for another video. But that's a good one to have. It's really working well for me to something a little bit more traditional, this red and white. And you guys, yeah, you can find all these colors, uh, well, something like that anyway, in just crappie jigs, but crappie jigs come apart like nobody's business. The Shamalure jigs will not come apart. They're durable. And they don't just make one version of red and white. See the difference there? Sometimes that matters, believe it or not. Or this, still a red and white, but different. So the tip is, have color variation. Okay, my final tip before wrapping up this video uh, kind of brings us full circle back to the actual layout of the rig. You know, we talked about the traditional rig, which is a series of jigs that terminates with a sinker at the end. And then we talked about uh, the last rig that I tied, which is, uh, it's all jigs, and it doesn't have a sinker at the end, but it terminates in a uh, quarter ounce jig. And then this last one, uh, which is most similar to the first one in that you've got a series of jigs, all, all sequential there, but instead of terminating in just a sinker, this one, this one does have a sinker. It's a sliding bullet sinker, but it actually terminates in a spoon. You may have seen some other rigs that terminate uh, with a spoon, uh, perhaps without the bullet sinker, but this one will give you that same effect of being able to fish lower in the water, water column or uh, fish some swifter water at the same pace. But uh, instead of just terminating with a sinker, you know, why not terminate with, uh, with a little bit of flash and a hook? Because I've actually seen days where skipjack are so aggressive that they'll actually bite at your sinker. So why not have a hook there? Um, you know, it, it works out for me. I'm, I'm not saying it's gonna work for everybody, but, but it's worked for me. And that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope that I've given you all the information that you need to tie your own custom sabiki rigs at home. Uh, if there's something that I missed, hit that comment section below. Or if you've got ideas for future videos, man, let me know. I read all my comments, respond to most of them. 
Uh, until next time, I just want to say I appreciate you watching, and uh, see you soon.